Hello and welcome to Shine, a series of videos that we hope will inspire and empower you. Today I'm speaking with Dr. Kelly Flanagan. He is a cl licensed clinical psychologist and the author of Untangled, which is a blog about relationships and um, all sorts of good stuff that I just love. I'm a big, big fan of your blog. So thank you so much for uh, chatting with us today. Thank you for having me, Sonia. This is great. Now, uh, the reason we're talking specifically today is about um, one of his blog posts recently, which is called Words from a Father to His Daughter from the Makeup Aisle, which has um, just gotten, you know, gone viral, and um, a lot of people are talking about it, and I just found it to be an incredibly moving letter, and um, if you're not familiar with it, um, Dr. Flanagan, if you could just read a bit of it and uh, introduce people to it. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I wanted to do, um, I wanted to write a letter to my daughter to talk about her um, her beauty uh, and to think about how that beauty can be understood in the context of a world that so often fuses our sense of worth with our external appearance. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the makeup aisle and I discovered in the makeup aisle that there are a lot of words in the makeup aisle. And, uh, and so I wanted to take some of those words and kind of reclaim them for um, a different kind of beauty. And so, for instance, um, brilliant strength. That was a, a word I saw in the makeup aisle. Um, and so I wrote, brilliant strength. May your strength not be in your fingernails, but in your heart. May you discern in your center who you are, and then may you fearfully but tenaciously live it out in the world. Um, another one that I, I saw um, was infallible. May you be constantly infallibly aware that infallibility doesn't exist. It's an illusion created by people interested in your wallet. If you choose to seek perfection, may it be in an infallible grace for yourself and for everyone around you. And then the one that um, you know that <laughs> Willie Geist chose to read on the Today Show was flawless finish. You, your finish has nothing to do with how your face looks today, and everything to do with how your life looks on your last day. May your years be a preparation for that day. May you be aged by grace. May you grow in wisdom, and may your love become big enough to embrace all people. May your flawless finish be a peaceful embrace of the end and the unknown that follows, and may it thus be a gift to everyone who cherishes you. I love that. I love that. And then the way you finish is, is I've read this actually many times and shared it many times, and I just want to share it. Um, you wrote, Little one, you love everything pink and frilly, and I will surely understand if someday makeup is important to you, but I pray three words will remain more important to you. The last three words you say every night when, you ask, when I ask the question, where are you the most beautiful? Three words so bright, no concealer can cover them. Where are you the most beautiful on the inside? And I just absolutely, absolutely love that. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, if you could just, you know, um, tell us a bit, like, well, well what, first off, you've gotten a huge response. Can you share a bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I published this blog initially on, um, on on my own blog and had a good response to it. Um, then I went ahead and I submitted it to the Huffington Post and, and they got back to me and they said we we just really think that this is important and we want to we want to promote it and push it. So we're gonna we're gonna do that and uh, you know much gratitude to them for giving it the attention that they did in doing that and it, it seemed to kind of um, push it over the top. Uh, people started to read it and then. It just kind of went crazy from there. It's funny when you when when something goes viral, um, you don't really know it's happening <laughs> like the center of it because you get the first few ripple effects as you know your community starts to share it, and then and then you just don't really know what's going on from there. So it was quite a ride over the last month, and it ended up with us on the Today Show talking about the letter, which was just an absolute blast. Um, so we've we've really enjoyed the ride. Funny story, I was in. Uh, I was in a, a store buying a shirt for the Today Show because I didn't have anything to wear because this is like what I wear on a daily basis. And um, and the woman behind the counter says, "So what's this for?" And I said, "Well, it's actually for the Today Show. You know, we're gonna uh, my daughter and I are gonna go on and talk about body image." And she looked at me and she said, "Are you the guy who destroyed society's definition of beauty?" <laughs> and, and I said, "You know, like not not sure if that's okay with her." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah I think I am." <laughs> She said, I can't believe I met you. And I said, I can't believe you can't believe you met me. <laughs> so, you know, the whole thing's just been very surreal, and uh, but we've enjoyed it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, um, and, and there's actually been, you've actually written a couple, like, posts even just even as follow-ups to that post because um, I think it's interesting. Like, I just thought, you know, like, I just really focused on the inner beauty. But it seems like also people 
were stirred up a bit about just even like the idea of like makeup is bad or something like right. that. So what, I mean, what is your view on, you know, like, as you said, you know, she'll grow up and I think of makeup as a fun thing, but it's kind of that love hate relationship that women have with it. I think. Yeah, I don't, and that's, you know, that's why I, I, I didn't end the letter initially when I wrote it the way that I did that, that last paragraph got added in when I was revising about kind of putting myself in her shoes and thinking about what it would be like for her to read this letter. And I thought, Boy, if I was in her shoes, I'd, I'd start to think daddy doesn't like makeup, you know, and I don't want her to have that message at all. I don't think there's anything inherently bad about makeup. Um, in fact, I mean, she truly, before she could talk, she was getting in mom's jewelry box and like trying on clothes and like she, I actually expect she's really going to enjoy wearing makeup and, and, uh, and, and having fun with her appearance. So I want to affirm that actually, but I want to, I want to try to disconnect um, that that sense of worth from those things. You know, there are things we have fun at, but they don't determine our worth. And so I think a lot of times what happens in the culture is the sense of worth gets fused with, with those fun things like makeup and, and how we handle our external appearance. And I just wanted to disconnect that a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, what would you say? Because, I mean, I think it does, I mean, it did stir up some things about me in me too, because I think there is, there's a part of me that absolutely loves makeup, you know, like I yeah. bonded with my mother, we would go to the makeup aisle together. And to me, it's like a lot of happy yeah. memories from that. Absolutely. And then also like, um, I used to do a lot of painting and so forth when I was a kid and did a lot of like art projects. And it's, it's something I do here and there, but it's not like a, something I do on a daily basis. So to me, like to do, to apply makeup is just kind of a fun, like it's like painting every day. Absolutely. But then there is like, you know, the concealer, because if you want to, you know, paint, um, you have to have a nice canvas. And so, um, yeah. you know, there is some like, you know, like, well, you know, have a, a fresh canvas to start with. But then, start, you know, you start to feel also like there's that, the fun aspect, but then a disparity between. Yep. Also, when you're not wearing it, you know, like, yep. well, sometimes I do feel like I've, you know, because then you get used to looking a certain way and getting attention in a yep. certain way. So. Yep. What would you, you know, because you, you know, as a psychologist too, like what, what would you recommend in that kind of, yeah. those feelings? Because I think a lot of women do have this, this kind of strained relationship with makeup. Well, absolutely. It's kind of this internal conflict with it. And I actually don't think makeup is unique in that way. I think, I think that, um, so for instance, like I love, I've discovered that I love to write. And so when I sit down to write, it's kind of like you sitting down to put on makeup. I'm doing it because I enjoy it. It's kind of part of who I am. I love it. Um, but the reality is then I'll post a blog post and there's this part of me that goes, how are people responding to the, to the writing, you know, like how many shares did it get today and so on and so forth. And so all of a sudden this thing that I just enjoy is just a kind of a true authentic expression of who I am. Now it's starting to get fused more with this, like, am I good enough? Uh, how are people responding to me? Am I worthy um, based upon other people's responses? And so I think that's the tension that, that most of us hold in, in anything that we do that we're truly passionate about and love is how do we maintain it as kind of a pure expression of who we are and not let that kind of protective ego come in that, that says everyone else has to approve of it or like it or have to look just a certain way or, or have just a certain kind of success in order to be worthy. Um, so I think, that, I think that is accentuated when it comes to makeup for women, but I think it's something that we're probably all dealing with whenever we're doing something that we love. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I was recently introduced to some concepts um, about like various needs that people have. And it seemed like you kind of touched on that. And one of the needs is need for significance. Yeah. But um, it's one of the more sort of basic needs, you know. And right. um, so I think it's it's acknowledged that it's there, but then don't get wrapped up in it or, you know. Right. Well, and, and in actually one of the first letters that I wrote, you know, or the first letter that I wrote to my daughter that also was widely read, you know, I talked about this idea of, of feeling significant, feeling interesting, and being able to connect with this sense of um, being inherently significant and inherently interesting simply based upon who we are, not on what we do or how we look. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that with makeup, it's, you know, it's particularly intense, this dynamic, because when you look at the words that I, I chose, and there were other words that I didn't, you know, write down in the letter, but infallible, flawless, um, let's see, age-defying, instant age-rewind, natural beauty. I mean, you're talking about 
like words that are literally unattainable. Mm-hmm. You can't be infallible. You can't be flawless. Um, you can't reverse aging. You know, <laughs> you, you, you know, you can't. Um, the, the beauty that they're selling isn't actually natural. You know, and so there's, you know, there's this carrot hung out there of you know your your worth could depend on achieving some of these things, but oh by the way, it's unachievable. And I just think that puts women in particular in an unwinnable situation. And um, and unwinnable. Yeah, I just, they could put that on a package. What's that? <laughs> put unwinnable on the package. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Un- untenable appearance. Uh, <laughs> unwinnable, unachievable. It, it won't sell. And that's the problem. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. Well, when we, what would you recommend as we go through the makeup aisle? Because you know there is that sense of fun, and 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 I don't think you know the answer is to just toss you know uh, the the, right. ma- the baby makeup uh, out with the bathwater. But right. um, when we're walking through the aisle and we're you know and and that's even just you know you were at Target, so I mean I right. think it's also um, a lot of women get turned off when they go to the department store because oh. not only are there these images, there are all these women. Um, or, you know, men and women, salespeople behind the counter, yeah. and they they will actually p- point out your flaws, some of them. <laughs> I know people that don't go to the department store because they've been told, you know, well, you need this and yeah. so forth. Yeah, shame, shame sells a lot of products, so yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they use it well, yes. So what would you recommend when we're in the stores and we still want to, like, if, if a person still wants to, you know, have the fun and play with makeup, but to not get, yeah, to keep it on the fun side. and right. Well, you know, I think I've heard from a lot of women since this letter went viral that um, a sense of like, wow, I had always been, re- I've always read those words in the makeup aisle, but I never really thought about them. Uh, they just kind of got in and started to affect the way that I thought about myself. Um, and so like one one thing that I'd recommend is actually pay attention to the words, like notice them. Um, and, and I mean, the reason I did this letter the way that I did is that I don't want to get rid of the words. I want to to repurpose them and, and use them for a different reason. And so, pay attention to the words. Um, and then I I would love it to be a time where you can enjoy buying makeup, and then also a time to reflect on how these words say something more about your inner beauty than your outer beauty. You know. So when you're when you're in the makeup aisle and, and you see brilliant strength, like it's a chance to kind of contemplate how yeah in what ways am I strong? How have people affirm that in me? How have I seen that in myself? And how does it not have anything to do with my fingernails? I can enjoy that, but um, just an opportunity to, to reflect on who we are rather than kind of hustling through and then letting those messages get in and not kind of questioning them and being um, kind of critical of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. I will definitely do that. And I, I want to tell you <laughs> something that you probably don't even realize, um, an impact that you've made. This is so funny. It's kind of embarrassing. I was thinking maybe I should tell you after, but you know, I should tell you now. <laughs> well, you can um, always edit. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I take a lot of pictures of myself. So I have, you know, a, a blog that has a lot of like makeup reviews and so forth. And one of the things about, you know, blogs where, that, where you talk about makeup is you take, people like to see pictures of, you know, real people yeah. wearing the makeup. And that is actually immensely helpful because, you know, yeah. like you can see it on a model that's been photoshopped and, and lit beautifully and so forth, but you know, it's not necessarily that helpful for people. So they like to see it on them. Right. So when I take these photos of myself now, hmm. I do, um, you know, it's easy to get critical and be like, hmm. you know, and start to pick them apart. And so this is really funny now. So whenever I take a photo now, I look at the camera and, you know, you can see yourself. I have the iPhone yeah. now, you know, and, um, and I and I say to myself, I say, "Where are you, you the most beautiful?" Uh-huh. And then I say on the inside to myself. And as I, uh, you know, here on the inside, that's when I click the picture. Uh-huh. And I swear to God, those are like the best pictures ever. That is, you know, that's better than, you know, a million Facebook shares. Thank you. <laughs> that's just so cool to hear. It really is. Um, you know. I started doing this thing with my daughter at a young age. Um, we actually asked two questions. The first one is, are you beautiful on the outside? And she says yes to that one, because I want to affirm that too. And then the second question is, but where are you the most beautiful? And it's on the inside. And um, <laughs> she's kind of getting at the point where, you know, I'm just dad. And I'm saying it every night. And so she's like, on the inside. <laughs> you know, of course. And 
So it's it's good to hear that when that idea is fresh, it makes a difference. <laughs> it does, it does, and I've recommended it to other people too, and 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 it, it is. I think you know it's been very touching to a lot of people. So it's thank you for cool. that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and one last question. So it, you know, it is you obviously you are a dad, and this is a letter to the daughter. And so, do you have anything like any recommendations just for parents, like? with little kids or with daughters, um, whether, you know, in particular fathers, how to approach this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, I think awareness is the first thing. And I guess, I, I guess maybe that's a theme running through what I'm saying here, kind of going to the makeup aisle and being aware of the words. Um, but I think just awareness of what our, our kids are taking in just every day. Um, so for instance, um, I couldn't believe it. We, you know, I love, I, I love the movie Frozen. I, I thought it was a fantastic movie. Uh, went to it three times. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it's amazing. I'm, it's it's on my it comes out on DVD in a couple weeks, so you yeah. can check it out then. But, um, you know, and my daughter absolutely loves it. I mean, it's, it's a, the ultimate kind of uh, princess movie, but not princess in the sense that it's very, the, the princess is very independent and strong. But, um, so, anyhow, so she, in the movie, the only problem I had with the movie is that these women are... Um, as they're depicted in animation, are impossible to attain. I mean, the, the, the body dimensions don't exist in real life. You know, their eyes are huge, like literally like two eyes are bigger than their waist size. Like it just, it was really kind of disturbing to watch. Um, and, uh, and so one thing that we did um, after watching the movie was we went and we, um, we watched a video of I think it's her name, Eva Mendez, or uh, mm -hmm. she's the Broadway singer who voiced the, the main character. And we watched her sing it because mm -hmm. she's a beautiful woman. But she's a, a normal kind of beauty, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so just to kind of be able to pair that voice with, um, you know, with a realistic image, I thought was important for our daughter. And um, and so just I think to be constantly aware of that, aware of the images that they're taking in, and doing what we can to when we see things that just aren't realistic um, and aren't helpful. I think that's important, and I think also just, you know, I think it's great for every family to have rituals around um, around sending these messages. Like our bedtime thing is a ritual, you know, and I think rituals kind of get in, you know, that on the inside I hope will will sink in. You know, we have friends who at bedtime they have a ritual where they ask each kid, you know, is there anything that you can do to make me love you less? And the kids say no. They say, is there anything you can do to make me love you more? And the kids say no. It's like. <laughs> Our love is unconditional one way or the other, you know, and I just think those kinds of rituals eventually get in. So I highly recommend parents coming up with their own rituals um, and, and being intentional about them with their kids. That's beautiful. And I would recommend also going to your blog because there's so many really cool things and maybe that gives, you know, would give some great ideas. So um, thank you very much for check, uh, chatting with me. And, um, and you're, if you, people want to, you know, follow um, Dr. Flanagan, go to drkellyflanagan.com. And anything you want people to know about, you know, your blog and so forth? Um, you know, I'm a therapist, and so I, I post like a therapist would once a week at the same time. Uh, every Wednesday morning, I'll have a post that goes up, and that, hardly ever more than one post. And um, and if you subscribe to the blog, you get a copy of my free ebook, The Marriage Manifesto: Turning Your World Upside Down. Um, and uh, you can also purchase that on Amazon. But um, I recommend going to the blog and subscribing and getting it for free. Okay. All right. And then um, any future plans, like, you know, books or anything we should know about speaking? Will you be traveling the country? The, the main thing I'm looking ahead to um, is, I guess, a couple things. Um, and there's a website called leanin.org, um, which is a, a website that um, is supporting women in leadership uh, and management and kind of trying to, to, to support the, the movement of women in those areas. So they're going to have a week coming up um, where I think it's, it's about kind of counteracting the, the stereotype that when women are strong leaders that they're kind of bossy or, you know, that, the, that, that kind of um, label gets applied to them. So I'll be guest posting for leanin.org. I think it's at the beginning of April. Um, and then I think Sometime in April or May, I'll be guest posting at Babbel.com. Um, I'll be taking an early look at the, their Disney's new movie, Maleficent, and talking about the dynamics of beauty between Sleeping Beauty and oh. Maleficent. So a couple fun things coming up there. And then on the blog, um, I never quite know where it's going to go. I, I play it pretty much week to week. Uh, I am about 75% of the way through writing a book, um, and that process kind of got put on hold in the midst of all this uh, yeah. craziness. But it, yeah, I, I expect probably the next week I'll resume writing that. So. 
Okay, wonderful. Well, Dr. Kylie Flanagan, thank you so much for chatting with me and sharing with us. And everybody check them out at drkellyflanagan.com. And thank you very much for joining us. I'm Sonia Shin. Until next time, be well and shine. Mm -hmm.